Nick Bosa's had a great year so far. Now, statistically, are his sacks where they should be? No, he's got one. But PFF, you know, they I think they do a good job. The four highest rated defensive edge players. Fourth, you got Micah Parsons, 91.8. Third, you got TJ Watt, 93.2. Second, you got Miles Garrett at 93.8. And just barely above that, number one in the NFL, Nicholas John Bosa with a 93.9. Now, is Bosa getting all the sacks and stats? No. If Defensive Player of the Year was an award, it'd go to TJ Watt. Probably Micah Parsons would be runner up. But Bosa's balling out. And if you look at the run game, you look at how he's getting triple teamed, double teamed. He's got the highest double team rate in the NFL. He's been triple teamed a ridiculous amount. I counted four plays in my breakdown of the second half that he was triple teamed. It's incredible. And, you know, you talk about those four players, like just from an NFL perspective, not a Niners perspective, the four, the NFL is spoiled. That is four Hall of Fame caliber players. TJ Watts going to the Hall of Fame. Like, he's going. He's that damn good. Miles Garrett, a couple more years, he's going to the Hall of Fame. Nick Bosa, a couple years, he's going in the Hall of Fame. Micah Parsons, he's youngest by far. But I, I hate Micah Parsons. I don't like him. I think he's a terrible person. Um, I don't think he was ever on the Niners draft board ever for all this stuff. I mean, it, if I can find a bunch of dirt on you in college, I'm pretty sure the 49ers can, and the Reuben Foster rule would have went into effect. There's a reason why Micah Parsons is on the Cowboys. And so far, He's been clean in the NFL, and I hope that he stays that way. But he's a hell of a player. Now, the 49ers have to play all three of them by week six. <laughs> and you got to practice against Bosa. Uh, Dave Labardi put this out. I thought this was cool. He's like, man, we have to play against Garrett. Already played against TJ Watt. We play against Parsons next week. And you practice against Bosa every day. That's crazy. Those four... You could stack them up against any of the top four edge players in NFL history at any given era. I'm sorry. I'm taking this group. It is crazy how talented these four guys are. Um, and the fact that we get them all at the same time in the NFL, it's pretty cool. And so, yeah, it, the fact that Bosa won defensive player of the year with these guys out there on the field, man, that's incredible. Is he going to win it this year? It's not looking like it. But, damn, they are good. They, they are really freaking good. Now, let's let's talk about this because this is on the Miles kind of Parsons train. The Arizona Cardinals played the Cowboys last week, beat the tar in, beat, beat the tar out of them. I think a big reason why they were able to have so much success was they ran right at Parsons. And as great and electric and explosive as Parsons is, he is, I don't want to say... He's not a negative in the run game, but you take away what he's best at, which is running. He's a speed dude. He's a high-end athlete, but he's not an anchor edge player. He's not that at all. Uh, check this chart out. This is from Next Gen Stats, and again, I'm going to try to audibly explain this as best I can for all the podcast listeners. This just shows where every single run was from James Conner, okay, in week three against the Cowboys. His four biggest runs, or four out of the five biggest runs he had all game, he had 14 carries. So it's not like he was like running. It's not like he had 30 carries, right? He had 14 carries for 98 yards. Now, his four biggest runs were right on the left side, the left edge. They were attacking wherever Micah Parsons lined up. If you look at Parsons, he played 37 of his 55 snaps on the defensive right or the offensive left right where all four of these big giant runs were. And in fact, actually, I want to take that back. The five top plays all were right there. They aimed right at Parsons. He cut back on one of them, but it was off the edge. Now the question turns to, if the Cardinals game plan is to go out there and try to do this same thing to Bosa, they're going to be in for a rude damn awakening. Because Bosa in the run game, I, I've asked this question hypothetically so many times. I don't know if Bosa is a better pass rusher or run defender because he's so damn good at both. Tied for the NFL lead in tackles for loss last year. It did lead the NFL in sacks. So if you just want to go off that, then you can say that. But if the Cardinals want to come out here and try to copy-paste 
that game plan that worked so well against the Cowboys and say, hey, Michael Parsons, defensive player of the year, edge rusher, we ran right at him, completely neutralized him. Most of our biggest plays were right at his gap. Let's do the same thing to Nick Bosa. That shit ain't going to fly. It ain't going to fly at all. It, it's not happening. And so it, I, I'm just curious, you know what I mean? Like what that looks like. Because this D line's different. It's different. Now, the Cowboys have better edge players than we do. As far as pass rush goes, I think the Cowboys have the deepest edge rush group in the NFL. I think their one true kind of all around defensive edge player is Tank, right? Uh, he's incredible. That, that dude's awesome. And, you know, out of Boise State, third round, he's been incredible. Tank Lawrence, I think that dude's just awesome. But the rest of their guys are all finesse. Dorrance Armstrong. Uh, you know, all the guys with the the rap sheet and whatever else, Sam Williams, you know, all those guys. That's a rough room to be a part of, man. But if you look at the Niners, it's a little bit different. You know, I went through and tallied just the defense. The 49ers defense is averaging 66 snaps per game defensively. So I went through and just tallied up what the average snap share for each defender is. So this is based on 66 snaps a game. Bosa's averaging 45.6. That's most for the Niners, which is crazy because he was on a snap count week one. That's only going to go up. Armstead second, 43.6 snaps a game. Hargrave, 42.3 a game. Drake Jackson, this is where the drop goes, right? So you got those three, they're out there. They're your studs. Drake Jackson, 32.6. Farrell, 31.6. I was really shocked. Drake Jackson's gotten more snaps than Farrell. And I don't think this week that's going to be the case. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Ken Law, 24 snaps a game. Givens, 20.3. That's a rotation, man. That's seven guys that you're just constantly boom, 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 boom. You've got three great edges. You've got four great DTs, and you're just rotating those guys. Now you can throw in some carry Hyder. You can throw in some other stuff. Like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. But, like, you're pretty stout with that group, and I like that group. Now, my question that I kind of led to it a second, I do think Drake Jackson, and again, I saw this again this week, he does not hold his lane assignments in the run game ever. So I expect a bunch more Cleveland Farrell this week, especially on early downs, Drake Jackson late, because Farrell's much more stout. Um, now, Farrell... Here's the thing. They kind of complement each other in a negative way. When Farrell rushes, he doesn't maintain his pass rushing gap integrity, which really bothers me. In the run game, he's always where he needs to be. In the pass game, he's not. Drake's the opposite. Drake's the opposite. So uh, if I was the Cardinals, I'm running towards 95 when he's out there. And I'm just that's just what I'm going to do. So really curious to see what the Niners are going to do to kind of counteract that. That that's something I really really want to watch. Um, so so we'll kind of see there. The 49ers Rush Podcast.